Lemon Amiga Presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out Knights of the Sky. This was developed by Jeffrey L. Briggs and published by Microprose in 1991. On the original install you can see something that stretches the screen to full screen mode even on a 50Hz machine and that means that we can run this game in NTSC which I'll be playing for the rest of this review. begins with an animated introduction. This was designed by Jeffrey L. Briggs and you can see the Amiga programmers as well, Kevin Buckner, Andy Parton, Mark Langer Arc, Dave Shea and Laurie Sinnott. They're all coders there at Microprose and they help with Civilization, Gunship 2000 and Silent Service 2. the obligatory Microprose enter the correct solution from the manual thing and then we get onto the title page where we can exit the game and at the bottom head to head that's if you have a modem and that means you can connect two computers together and play with a friend over a modem unfortunately I'm not sure well maybe you can play that on Amiga Live the dogfight encounters are the aces built into the game, you can fight them head to head and you can also start flight training as well if you've no idea how to fly this aircraft. So for now we're going to select the World War 1 and that takes us on to the career scenario. From now we get to select our pilot and if you select one that's already been on that high score table I think that clears it and that means we can enter our name again and that means that we can enter that let's put capital D this time down and British or French we can either be British or French unfortunately not German in this game and level one I've no idea what the levels do and that isn't in the manual either but for now we've just started you can see a new guy Corporal Dan I've arrived May the 1st 1916 now you can see some statistics from the aces that were already flying around and accept that pilot and now we can hang around the base for a little bit or we can fly our first mission and you can even press the S key to save up I think our position at any point once we get to this screen and let's look at our portfolio this will show us all of the aces that are flying around in the game and you can shoot all of these down and you can become an ace by shooting these down you can see the number of kills that they've got and the aircraft that they are flying you can also visit the hangar and from here we get to choose our aircraft there are precious few available at the very start of the game and some of those are British some of those are French so you can see DH2 and uh, Newport 11 I think those, well, they've got a French symbol on the back, so it looks like we can only choose two French aircraft from the very start of the game, and those have got advantages and disadvantages, of course, so I'm going to have to select one of these and go for it, which one I want, and then we get to fly that mission. In this mission we have to patrol and we have to patrol point one and then point two and Dick's mud and then we have to get all the way back again to wherever we are point B. 
and that means that we've now completed the patrol and as soon as we land that means that that mission is over right at the start of the game you will find yourself in the cockpit of this crate and you can press the keys to look around left and right up and down and it's very fun to do that and we can also press some more F keys as well and that shows us a tactical view and that comes in very handy for seeing the enemies and that will follow the enemies around there's also a bombing view a chase view as well and front back and both side slots unfortunately that's not much of a help and you can see top down view as well you can even look up at the clouds the first thing we need to do is to press the O key to start the engines Then we can press the plus and the minus key to increase the throttle. Hopefully control is on the joystick and we can press a number of keys in this game and those are not insurmountable. It is possible to memorise the plus and the minus and the various F keys on offer. We can also press, I think it's Alt A and Alt D and Alt A will actually advance time for us and all D will reduce the detail so this game flies very quickly and we're playing this on an all 30 at the moment and we're also playing NTSC so hopefully it should fly 60 frames per second as quickly as it is going to do and maybe with the all 40 it's a bit too quick and you can see we're fighting against gravity every time we pull up the huge engine will pull us back down again because that's the weightiest thing in the aircraft and the tail hardly weighs a thing and we are stuck in the middle of it and this is a basic crate and this is us stuck in the middle of a crate a wooden box created out of wood and it's got a big strapping engine strapped to the front of it which weighs it down and you can see flak damages our aircraft and that means as soon as you get anywhere near the enemy line they will start to fire upon us. You can see we're hovering over it now even though you can see it also in the distance. There's a brown mark and that brown mark on the landscape is basically a trench. We are in World War One. This is 19 whatever it said at the beginning and you can see that the trenches have now been built over Flanders and Epes and it's our job to patrol over the top of them what can you do? Well, if you're flying too high, it means that the flat won't hit us, and that's perfect. You can have to master how to learn how to do that. You can see our engine now is spluttering because of that, and um, bullet causes minor damage. The more damage that you take, the more things that will go wrong, and sometimes the more altitude we'll lose as well, simply because we're losing horsepower in the engine and you can't afford to lose any horsepower in the engine because there is only just enough particularly on this first one to be able to get that thing up in the air in the first place and so these old aircraft are particularly flimsy and you can see if we deviate at all from the in cockpit view it's pretty difficult to fly them I have no idea whether that's an ally or an enemy but because it has a, a black cross on it I'm more or less predicting that's an enemy. We can press J to turn to joystick control or M to turn to the mouse control. We can also press I think it's Alt J or Shift J something like that and that will switch on analog joystick controls so if you're playing this with a PS2 controller something like that you can switch on analog flight stick controls and you can remap the buttons of course so that you can fly this thing and look at that we can even learn some bomb as well and I think you do that with the Dell key or I think maybe if it's anything like wings you can hold down fire button and pull back but we can launch bombs and that means by hammering that Dell key we can get those on target everything you blow up will give a score at the end of this mission At the moment I'm struggling on with the mission even though we've been hit by the flak we're successfully over enemy lines now so that means everything in front of us now should be an enemy 
Uh, that means we can shoot it down, and from this distance it's not possible to hit much, but it's surprising little dots on the landscape soon move into view. And sometimes those bullets can simply wander into an aircraft pretty easily as long as you get those lined up. Fortunately, the front of the aircraft is particularly heavy and it's trying to drag us down because we haven't got enough horsepower to stay up in the air, so fighting this aircraft is going to be particularly difficult from now on. Even if it is an aircraft, I think it is, and you can even press buttons to zoom in and out just to see what it is. And just like F-18 Interceptor, we can zoom in on the landscape, and that means we get a target ID. At the moment, I'm just debating what to do, and I think that, well, I'm just hanging around at the moment, waiting for the enemies. We are getting towards that point A, whatever it was, point one, and it's taken us a long time to get there. And again, you can advance time, but that's not recommended over enemy lines, because the enemy will simply swarm on us, and that does not give us any time to react at all, so definitely don't bother with that. And it looks like it's an enemy air balloon, and it's a big red thing, and in this game I think the enemies are red, and we're kind of a blue colour and I think we fly green aircraft. Luckily at this stage the enemies don't have much horsepower either and if we damage those ships we can take those down and those will be counted I think as long as we land back again at our friendly airstrip at the end and if we do that before we've completed the mission We'll get refueled and recharged and rearmed and repaired and that kind of thing. And if we do it at the end, we'll simply get that score. Sometimes, if you shoot somebody down, you can view a replay. And looking at those keys as well, we can press various keys during the replay to see that from various angles, just like Indy 500. And again, that was massively ahead of its time for 1991. And this being a full 3D open world adventure, this has a massive landscape. Massive. And it will probably take half an hour to fly from one side to the other. So this has got more in common with Frontier Elite 2, where we had massive landscapes to fly around. know where I am at the moment but you can see an orange mark right over on that horizon that's enemy airstrip and that's what we're meant to patrol I think let's have a look at that map yet I think it's the enemy airstrip that we're meant to be heading towards so let's do that and you can see virtually everything on our control panel is broken and if we mess around with the throttle well we'll crash into the ground if you return to the game well we'll bail out and Sometimes we'll return back to Allied territory, and sometimes we'll simply get captured. So, you went down German lines, then sneak through no man's land, you failed to carry your orders, you resigned headquarters before you failed mission. So, unfortunately, I shot down one enemy, we got that in our sights, we got that. We got one kill added to us, we're now on May the 11th, which is fantastic. And unfortunately, May the 11th, we don't get any other types of aircraft, so let's try to go for this one. And let's now move on to the second mission. You'll be covering somebody, and somebody's going to take photographs. And so while they're taking photographs, you have to, it looks like, escort somebody over enemy lines, point one, point two, and T is the target. And once they've photographed the target, you can get back again. learnt my lesson now let's try to climb up you can see the escort plane behind us it's now taking off and knowing the flight path we can fly ahead of that and take down any danger but what I'm actually going to do is hang back 
and play around with the escort plane a little bit and part of the hard part of this game is gaining enough altitude in the first place right at the start of every mission and the more altitude you gain the better because that means you can sail over enemy lines without getting hit and that means you can just dive bomb the enemy make your kills get back to altitude again and then fly back looking around for our plane we're meant to escort and that's where the camera angles come in where we can track that and see escort recon there it is so let's now maneuver towards that there it is and so we can hang back if we want to do that but for now I'm going to try to concentrate on raising up that altitude because now I want to get over those guns and I think if you're over a certain altitude I can't remember what it is, but let's imagine it's 3,000 feet, then that means that we're over those guns. This is a kind of tactical shooter, so you can't play this like Interceptor and expect to fly head on into danger. And it does happen eventually, and if you're going to speed up the footage by pressing Alt A, then this is probably definitely the time to do it and once you're over enemy territory it becomes much harder so it's kind of a, a tactical game it does take ages to fly from A to B it can take an hour per mission and in real time so this is one of those games that you just might want to boot up and play one mission get through it and a bit like the settlers you're gonna have to sit down there and wait the long haul to get through it and the frame rates are great on the O30 and we can see everything full detail which is switched on to maximum as default and so that's terrific and you can see enemies buzzing us already careful because those enemies can lure us into a trap and can also fire upon allied aircraft as well so it's the brown ones that I'm particularly interested in the ones with that black cross and it looks like we've got two of them and it's pretty difficult to see of course out of our cockpit or our basket or whatever it is our weaved box of coffin that we end up being in in this game and it's important to keep track of the escort as well if we can lure flak away from that that's great but that might be taking flak of its own so the best thing to do is to dive down and try to get some speed up so that we outrun our enemies we can also pull a swift 180 or 360 there you go that's nice and that means we can take a few pot shots on the enemy because it lines up in this game if you got it on level 1 it means that the enemies simply line up behind us and start shooting so that means all we need to do is fly around start shooting them and then fly back again and they will be unable to turn to avoid us they will simply fly back around in front of us so that we can shoot them down so that isn't automatically a winning technique and the manual, a hefty massive manual for this game, it does actually give you some flight manoeuvres which include the Immelman manoeuvre and I don't know, the Heimlich manoeuvre and all these kinds of things if you want to spit out your food, if you're choking then it's got all that in the manual For now it looks like we're halfway to the target which is great and our enemies are going down which is also fun to see but we're losing track of our escort unfortunately and if you fly over something I think that's the guy in the distance let's try to get some speed up maybe and you can see we're flying almost as quick as we can at the moment using this very basic aircraft that we've got and we're deep into enemy lines and I'm just going to check just to make sure that there's nothing floating around and really once you get used to this game you can do all that with the F keys 
and that saves you doing any of that in the first place because the F keys are kind of like guided missile cameras and they will just lock on to whatever it is that's flying around. So employing our usual 180 followed by 180 manoeuvre which I'm going to call how to shoot down aircraft in the game now we get yet another guy and it looks like the guy in front of us maybe has reached the target I think it actually comes up on the screen when some kind of level checkpoint and look at that dive bombing us and we're going to have to get out of the way because if he crashes into us unfortunately we're going to take damage look at that and you can get really close in this game because you're flying really slowly and again if you take any damage you'll fly really slowly into the ground if the enemy's ducked down behind our native horizon it's best not to follow them because maybe there will be enemies on our level and if we duck down they will simply dive down upon us and when we dive down we'll gain some speed yes great but that means we lose that altitude and that means we are vulnerable to all kinds of things so if you can maintain the altitude we're flying around 4,000 feet at the moment that means the enemies have to fly up to us there will be various ground guns dotted around there will be convoys there will be enemy balloons and enemy aircraft all of which you can shoot down for a bit more prestige corner of our screen we've also got a readout of the bullets remaining and you can see that well not even sure whether that thing's reached the target we're gonna have to fly to the target so we can knock that off the map and I think that's it this airfield let's have a look at it no that's the enemy airfield so it looks like it's way off in that distance and we've taken some bullets you can see the bullet damage and this wood paneling again another game with wood paneling just like supercars 2 and Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge by the Magnetic Fields crew and I think this game just spits out automatic bombers and fighters towards us I don't think that there's actually a limit to them so you can accrue tons of kills in real life of course both enemies of course they were both enemies they only had a few to take out on patrol and maybe once four have gone down then it's best to hang back with the others for another day but in this game it seems to send wave after wave of enemies towards us we're on 254 bullets left which means I think we've got through half of them and it looks like we're still being tempted by those enemies again now that we're at low altitude it's even more harder to do those maneuvers and at low altitude it's easier to knock out the enemies of course but now we're also in range of certain guns so we don't want any more bullets hanging around us and we'll be in attack left right and center well enemy plane enemy plane enemy plane and so it looks like there's enemy plane in front of us as well and I'm not sure whether I can get to that target anymore because I'm rapidly running out of everything and I don't know whether that target is necessary for me to get to or not so that's why these missions take a long time looks like by the way that we're flying towards the enemy lines again it looks like we're gonna chicken out and I'm not sure whether we have any fuel on board or fuel gauges and apparently the electrical ammeter doesn't work and the oil gauge I don't think works in this game but everything else does so in theory we could fly around forever And 
yep, it definitely looks like I'm chickening out I'm going for that mission because it's just taking a very long time to get there and every single time I try to make it over there I just get attacked so it's getting more difficult to handle as more bullets go through the frame and so damage modeling is present in the game and you can guarantee as soon as something hits us it'll be from the rear and that means now we are being attacked again from both sides we're down to 108 bullets so that rules out any kind of possibility and let's hope that there was a message on the screen that they've actually taken those photographs and that the mission is over because I didn't notice it but with only 108 bullets 105, 103 bullets left it's going to be difficult to get back and save the day return back to our allied base to end the mission and if you land anywhere else it will perhaps rearm us or whatever it does I don't think it repairs us but whenever it does you can land of course if you land at an enemy air base then you'll get captured so I think if you press escape in this game you can simply bail out and move on to the next mission not that they had parachutes anyway and I don't think it mentions escape or bailing out in the manual or what that actually does for us but if you get to a point where your aircraft is too badly damaged then perhaps we can press escape and perhaps we can live for another day as long as we manage to do that over the enemy lines so let's try to get over there and yep we're now halfway back to our landing strip and you can see fields and things like that we do well we did get a map you've got the PC version you've got a fold out map with this and that gives us the in-game map only a little bit bigger so if you've got strong glasses and a magnifying glass or something like that you can actually look at the map of France and see all of these things not that that will help us much in the game when you can simply press a button to view the map allied territory then sometimes you have some kind of air superiority and the enemies simply melt into the background that's the good news and that means only half the map in theory is where you're going to take damage so only half the map in theory is going to be anywhere near a problem and I'm hoping that I'm going towards the right base at the moment another problem is landing and apparently you can press the L key to land automatically but I like to land manually because that means you get the full feel of this aircraft and if you can land these and you can take off then that means you're more of a pilot and you can handle it unfortunately it means we're going to have to take the long way around and I have landed in these airstrips by the side and all kinds of things I think if you stop in the square in the middle of it that's all you need to worry about and it's important to maybe not nose dive into the floor but you can more or less glide in which these things are glorified gliders with a massive heavy engine bolted onto it you can more or less glide in and these mountains aren't particularly big so don't be tempted by that let's see if we can make a landing and it looks like we're coming in too quickly altitude is broken so I've no idea whether we've touched down there you go we've touched down now and that means we can now taxi our way to the airstrip I'd hardly call it a runway 
It's more like an air strip. Throttle down, engine repaired. Refueled, rearmed, everything else is fine. Are we at the right place? Yes. So it looks like I'm going to have to press escape because the mission wasn't done. And it means you can fly out there again and spend another half an hour playing the game. And you can see enemies on the horizon. So it is possible to do that. And maybe it's a good idea to do that if you want a massive score. And I think sometimes the Allied aircraft gets blown up that's taking photographs, then another one will set off. And maybe that's possible. And that simply means that you'll be already over the target when that aircraft arrives to take the photographs. And that means that you can defend it a bit more. So hence, if you go out in front of the escort at the beginning of the mission that should mean you can get there first defend it make sure that that photograph gets taken and I think if it's shot down on the way back it doesn't camp so you have to escort it on the way back The key thing that we can do is to fly very low over the enemy lines and that will mean that we are too low for the guns to hit us and that means, well, they can only aim and target on something that's quite some way away and if it's online and in a line and on target they can shoot it down but if you're only a few hundred feet above the ground then that means they can't hit us and that's one way to get above the, well, out of range basically with the cannons because they can't hit things. Unfortunately I don't think the small arms fire does much but if you've got some bombs it means you can release those bombs on the enemy and waste those over the enemy on every single mission and that means well if you've got them you might as well use them up that means you can get even more score but the bombing run is very difficult and as soon as that thing appears on the horizon no matter what it is you should release the bomb because by the time you've released it it's already miles and miles and miles too late so even if you are really close to the ground it's pretty difficult so sometimes the bombing camera isn't very helpful unless you know where something is in advance and then you can drop it and watch it fall into the ground and it's those things that are really great in this game because it's got those depths and it's not just a, a game well before this we've got Ace of Aces and Ace 1 and Ace 2 on the Commodore 64 and obviously after this we've got high speed action F-18 shooters and things like that but really tactical shooters like this we have to keep the aircraft in the air was and is still pretty rare. So I've now become an ace, I've pressed escape now and according to that I've shot down so many people that I'm now an ace and it also gives us some more headlines as well. We're now on June the 12th 1916 so we're now two days in and we've got seven kills You might have noticed that we didn't get any bonuses for shooting down things because we didn't finish the mission, but because we escaped it means we survive another day. So let's check out our stats, we're now 7 kills, so it won't take much more now to be Ace of Aces. And of course we're only on level 1 difficulty at the moment, so it's going to be easy. And if you know this game at all, perhaps level 3 is what to aim for. So, an enemy fighter group is approaching the front near Eep. You must intercept and destroy them. So, that's a very easy mission. Allies have completed design. Aha, we've got a new fighter. And 
whatever it is, maybe we can now select that from the hanger. The mission is an observation balloon in the vicinity. And it looks like we can advance missions and decline the missions. And it looks like we can choose which ones we go for. So we didn't choose the fighters coming in, but we did choose to knock down a weedy weather balloon. Back to the game, you can see that these things take place at various times of the day. And I think this says it's early morning. So I think there may be even night raids as well, and it's fantastic to see various times of the day represented, and maybe there are weather effects as well, you can see a black cloud on the horizon, so there is many many depths of this game, and the landscapes as well, sometimes it's best just to taxi around the landscapes and drive along the roads and pretend you're flying on the road and playing, you know, World War One game where you're just flying around and seeing things and so you can do all kinds of things in this game there are 20 aircraft in it to unlock and each one of those 20 aircraft will have different stats and each one of those will be released later and later in the game so for now I'm going with the one that I started with and you can see on the dash it gives us a basic compass for where we should be heading it gives us the looks like miles per hour which is pretty low in fact because we're climbing at the moment and we've got the altitude which goes up I think in thousands and the RPM we're on maximum RPM trying to climb so in this mission what we have to do is to fly behind enemy lines and shoot down a weather balloon a harmless pathetic weather balloon but they are I think maybe five or six thousand feet up so what we're going to do is we're going to train ourselves on this one, this is an allied balloon, and so if we are at its height, then we should be at the same height for the enemy balloon as well. So every time you go up in the aircraft, that will have more horsepower underneath us, and that will mean that we can climb easier, bank easier, and we won't stall out as easy, and that means we can do loop the loops and all kinds of split S's and things that you wouldn't believe. But right now, it's just a matter of keeping this thing in the sky and that means we have to climb towards the weather balloon. seem to be taking a shortcut to the target and that's not too bad and because we're high enough now hopefully we're high enough to get over those ground guns and the enemy will lure us and as soon as they do that you can see we dip under the horizon that means we're going to be losing altitude so sometimes it's better to ignore the enemy and just keep flying straight don't forget if the enemy is behind us then there is a minimal risk that they're going to shoot the engine but they will shoot the wings and they will cause minor damage. If we are at a great height, maybe that also stops the enemy from climbing all the way up there as well, because if it's a chore for me, it's a chore for the enemy as well. But I don't think the simulation aspect is that good. I think maybe even the enemies appear on the horizon and I don't even know if they spawn. I certainly haven't seen any enemies taking off from the landing strip, so that means I think they spawn, and that means it's not absolutely realistic. But from a game from 1991, when five years before that people were playing 8-bit video games, then I think this is a massive, massive step forward. It's 
going to be difficult if I start shooting this guy it means I'm going to have to go down and they're still taking pot shots they're not actually damaging us and there's no bullets anywhere no instruments are broken so oops, sometimes if you collide too high we haven't got the horsepower to do any vertical maneuvers so that means we'll stall and we'll fall to the ground for now I am way too high and you can see that I'm trying to climb to maximum altitude and I think it is actually possible to get up above the clouds and that's 9,000 feet so that means hopefully I should be able to level out and the clouds are of course flat polygons so flying through those and let's see what that actually does you can see we've got a machine gun mounted directly on top of the aircraft and I think that fires maybe between the blades of our engine uh, maybe above that whatever and it's actually easy now to lose track of where we are it looks like we're right over the enemy line still so I really shouldn't be messing about I really should be heading towards that target a long line of coders and I think most of those coded the PC version and I think this was converted and the graphics were created by Stephen Kane and he created the graphics for Badlands Peaked, Black Lamp and also Star Goose and music we've no idea who created the music but according to what I've read 10 Pin Alley. And 10 Pin Alley is kind of a bowling alley, and so they also created music for Silent Service 2 as well, so we've no idea who created the music. And it's very jolly music in the game, what bit there is of it. Sometimes our gun gets jammed and that means we'll be unable to fire unless we press the key to unjam it. And you can see I'm right on that target now but I can't shoot it because our guns are jammed and I can't remember what button it is to unjam them. Yep, right there, right above that target. So what is it? Well it's actually the U key. U key Sonoda. It's actually the U key that I'm supposed to be pressing. So if you press the U key tons of times it will eventually unjam the guns and the message will eventually disappear off that screen but until I find that U key I'm no longer going to be able to fire. That gives us time to go through the scores. I may get Joker awarded this masterpiece a huge 69% Lemon Amiga managed to fork out 82% Amiga Action awarded it 88 Amiga Power even gave it 87 Steel Amiga also gave it 88 and Amiga Format gave this 88% Joystick Magazine awarded it 89, The One awarded Knights of the Sky 90%, Zero awarded this 91, and Datto gave it 93, and computed 92, so I think that basically means 8.7 out of 10, but I'm going to actually round that up to 9 out of 10. I think the story mode is there. And apart from enemy aircraft actually launching and apart from actually visibly seeing bullets and barrages and things like that landing and signs of war I think this game is virtually complete and it's got everything that you would expect in there so for particularly 1991 when the average flight sim was getting towards the status that you can see 
With modern flight sims, i.e. it's all 3D stuff, it's all analog controls, and it's all representative kind of flight dynamics, well, we actually got that kind of thing now, by this period, and that means that huge teams of people were developing games by this point, and that means quite a lot of coders were involved with this game. I'm actually trying to descend now because I can't find the balloon that I'm supposed to be blowing up, and I've blown up a few enemies, and one of the aces have spotted us. That means if we shoot down the ace, that means it's good for us. And that's the balloon, so the ace is right behind us. Let's take care of the ace first of all, because the balloon isn't going to fight back. You can tell the ace is spraying bullets towards us, and yes, we can see those bullets now. And I think those bullets are actually, some of them, are coming from the ground. And so I was wrong, yes, we can actually see the ground guns in the game. And I'm not sure whether the guy I'm fighting is actually the guy that showed up on the radar. Some of these aces have a sneaky habit of getting behind us, and yet it looks like that is actually coming behind us. What am I doing? I'm flying back to enemy lines. Why am I flying back to enemy lines? Get back to the balloon. Been shot down and I've lost most of my altitude now. I can't even remember whether I've shot the balloon down or not. And so maybe this is getting back because I've actually shot it and no idea. So let's waste a few bombs. And there was smoke already down there, maybe we took out an enemy and that's fantastic. Now dive down over towards oil lines that will increase our speed and it'll also increase the frame rate and make sure that we get there all the quicker as well. Sometimes we can hear the enemy guns behind us and this is played on the authority. I have no idea whether that's a bug in the game or whether the enemy guns are simply blasting the heck out of us in the war. And end mission, yes, it looks like I've pressed escape again. And I've scores for liberty, it looks like. I've demonstrated my skill a bit by shooting down planes. And that's fantastic. And Albert Ball has now scored his fifth victory recently. And we'll also get bits of news from all over. This is why I give this 9 out of 10. And this reminds me of Wings as well. Sometimes we can simply fly over that area and knock out an ace on our way towards another mission. So I'm now victorious. And now I've got 8 kills. Now finally let's get back into that hangar and let's see if we've invented everything. No, it's still a load of French stuff. So, well, I'm not quite sure. Maybe if we continue with that war. And it doesn't berate us if we press escape and skip things at all. And I didn't actually see what I was supposed to do on that mission, so I've had to skip it. And Spad 7 is definitely what many people remember. When they played this, that's one of the early aircraft that you get early in the game, and it's one step above from a basic crate with wings on it, 
and hopefully that's what we'll get eventually. And we've got the new port 17, which means that it flies a tiny bit quicker. Now we've got a bombing mission, but we're supposed to follow a bomber now over to those targets. And now hopefully a bomber will fly a little bit slower than the photography mission. So what I'm going to do is actually let that take off. Because you can see how slow it's having to fly because it's a bomber. all kinds of missions in this game. We can outrun that bomber no problem at all but that means it's a sitting duck. So instead of chasing out to the target like a photography mission, now we're gonna have to protect that thing and it might even mean that we need to throttle back and hang around it. That's not particularly easy, particularly at this ridiculous altitude. even got shadows on the ground so we can notice where our friends are, maybe even our enemies, and they didn't have to put shadows on the ground and all the things that they have done in the game. And I remember with some missions you get, oh look at that, an enemy coming straight there. You get on some missions you actually take a, a convoy of trucks and you have to bomb the trucks and you have to get back to the airport, get some more bombs, bomb the trucks. And that's a convoy that's actually moving along the ground and so there are those kinds of missions in the game it seems unbelievable but it does get down to that kind of depth and there are tons of different missions you would expect the same old humdrum kind of recon missions fly that but no there are all kinds of things so this may even have different mission types than something like elite no idea but for now you can see that we've spent so much time flying around that we're now actually lagging behind our friend and that means we're going to have to climb that means we're going to have to waste even more time and if we don't we're going to get hit as we go over those lines and I don't think our allied planes take damage as they fly over the lines but they'll certainly get damaged from enemies a bit later on and those enemies will hopefully come after us because a bomber is no threat to them but this fighter is. So you can see the bomber is taking the low road by flying over enemy lines pretty low. It's gone zoom straight over it before they've had time to raise a barrel and yeah, straight over it. That's the way you do it in this game. And uh, you can see something, well, looks like I've taken damage already. by an ace but more likely it was those ground guns and I was flying not low enough and not high enough either. Now we have 10 more horsepower it is possible to come back and flying over these lines I really shouldn't be doing that and again it's pretty disorientating sometimes when you're trying to track those enemies why am I flying backwards I've no idea I think maybe I'm even gonna try and repair myself before I've even oh actually I'm actually following the escort I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing at the moment and that's because this thing is flying erratically and it's flying adjacent to the line it's not actually flying all the way there so that means that sometimes you can't even just get there and get back again sometimes the bombers follow a safe path and that means that we're gonna have to anticipate that and not get too close to the line otherwise we can come in range
There are tons and tons of missions in the game, of which we're only going to scratch the surface, and you don't need me to explain basic flight dynamics, or basically mission orders. You just read the mission, go out there and do it. So, let's see if we accept this one. Hunter Squadron is approaching, find and destroy then, let's decline that, because that's just a dogfight. No one wants to see that, particularly. I'm actually waiting for the SPAD 7, or whatever it might be, and escort, escort, escort. So it's a good job that you can sit the war out if you really want to do that. There's three years of war to sit through, and or at least two of them left. I think it ended, well, 1918, obviously, so there was at least two years of the war left. And it looks like we've accepted another mission where we have to escort a bomber. So hopefully, maybe for the last time, let's go out on a mission and let's see if we can get any further with it. These missions are difficult and obviously to get more difficult as it goes on and the enemies hopefully will get more difficult as well so sometimes you might even want to skip out the most dangerous ones and maybe the fighter aircraft might be even more dangerous because you get attacked by three or four at once and believe me if you can take two on at once that's not too bad but once it gets to four you have them all coming in from different directions. It means, you know, after which way you're flying, you're going to get hit. And that can be a meat grinder, so sometimes you don't particularly want those. And, of course, basic escorts aren't too bad, but they are actually quite difficult as well. Because not only do you have to take care of the escort, but obviously you have to get there and back again. remember I got this game and 1991 it was very slow on the Amiga 500 when I used to have it and this was definitely one of the games that I used as an excuse to buy my first or 30 card which cost about 250 pounds back then or maybe more and I got a basic 25 megahertz one because somebody told me if you take out the clock chip and put in a 50 megahertz one, it now runs at 50 megahertz. So I did that. And the clock chip cost me like £1.50. So I swapped them over and put some massive RAM in there, and suddenly I had a powerhouse. And that was cheaper than buying myself an Amiga 3000. So that's when I had, and going on Grand Prix, and this game, and Elite, of course, really benefited from a fast CPU. Otherwise, many of the other games that I had didn't, or ran way too quickly. Let's hope now that we're at the right height, or we'll be on oh, 5,000 feet. That should be enough to get over those guns. And again, the other plane has taken the low route. I'm just hanging back and spiraling, hopefully trying to get some more of those enemies. They can automatically be counted out as wearing the same colours every time. Some of them will be red, and some of them can be green. So I've no idea whether what I'm shooting at is a friend or not. And that's pretty dangerous because you'll be shooting down the actual plane that you're supposed to be defending. Identify an aircraft, this stage is important, and usually the aircraft that are buzzing around us, look at that, too close to the front again. The aircraft that are buzzing around us will be the enemies because the friendlies won't care about us one way or the other. No idea whether I've blown the thing to bits or not, but you can see friendlies are. Ah, look at that, enemy aircraft is green. So let's shoot him out of the sky, and then that's not going to confuse us any further. And I think there he is, or maybe not. It's pretty difficult sometimes swapping views. 
see where we are and the friendly was somewhere and I think that's the friendly I'm actually shooting at the moment or whatever looks like I've shot it and always look for the black cross on the wings if possible enemy 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 where's the friendly gone enemies enemy aircraft right behind us Shot it. Let's hope that that was an enemy and not a friendly. View tactical view escort recon. Is that the shot that I've just shot down? I'm pretty sure it is. Ah, well, whatever. It looks like I'm gonna have to shoot down some more guys and eventually, hopefully, a friendly escort will show up. So we'll just keep on checking that map. And in the meantime, let's score a few more kills. balloon that we can knock out and those things I think can be punctured and they slowly fall to the floor so it is possible to do that and I think that that's an enemy let's shoot him down you can get really good at this after a while and you can just let the enemies flow into your bullets Those pylons on the bottom of the screen look like, well, they might be anything, they might be obelisks, but what they actually are are ground guns shooting towards us. So again, at very low altitudes, I'd say maybe 2,000 feet, you might even be safe from them. I don't think they take any damage from bullets, but they will take damage from bombs if you're bothered about that. We have lots of allied aeroplanes flying around us, we're over the target, so let's just fly towards the target and let's see if something works. Again, it should pop up on the screen when the mission is complete. It's the art of conserving bullets rather than spraying everywhere. Sometimes you can simply spray the enemy lightly. That means you get more time active in the field. The aircraft takes more damage, it's even more difficult to stay above the horizon. And again, I didn't notice whether that mission is complete or not. I think sometimes you have to actually fly over the target for maybe something to disappear. But I'm almost sure that there is a visual message that appears on the screen when the target has been reached so that we can fly back again. bad shape at the moment and I'm just debating whether to fly back again because this looks like another mission failed simply because I think I shot down the allied bomber and so let's see what I decide to do 
I'm on fire and everybody's killing us. Let's see what's around. Enemy plane, enemy plane, enemy balloon, enemy, enemy, enemy. So there might be a few allies knocking around and there certainly will be. As the war goes on, we'll get more aircraft and so will the enemy. So you can imagine the skies are going to be pretty full and it's going to be difficult to know who to hit. At the moment, let's just dive back to the allied base again. And if we've completed the mission, that's great. But if we are above allied lines, it should mean that we don't get captured. Look at that, even bombing the trenches has bombed miles in front of us and I almost bombed the allied trenches as well, which isn't very helpful and I'm sure the chaps down there aren't going to really appreciate it too much. So this game, you can see it's got cities on there and I don't think it's got, well it's got some rivers and it's got some roads as well accurately on there and with all this action going on you can see it looks like am i is that are my eyes mistaken or is that another bomber and maybe another bomber is set off escort yeah there it is escort recon escort so it's another bomber so all right then let's follow the bomber we've got some time we're almost dead we'll follow the bomber and we've, we've already killed quite a lot of things so maybe it means that our job now could be look at that a convoy I love bombing convoys especially in this game it's head and shoulders better than wings and I don't actually rate wings that much I know that's gonna ooh, everyone's gonna hate me for that and yeah, they'll love it or hate it. I love this game to bits. I love the story mode, I love the action, I love the bombing runs, I love the dogfights. Wings, even if you have a fast CPU, it just doesn't feel as fluid as this and as open world as this. And I've been annoyed the heck out of Wings before now. I know some people love it, but I've been annoyed so badly with Wings before now I just wanted to shut it off. But with this one, I've managed to get away with... Oh, look at that! Do we have the altitude to even follow that guy? I'm trying to follow the bomber at the moment. And that guy will travel around us. Is that it? Has the bomber reached the mission? Is the bomber flying backwards now? Well, we know there's someone on our tail. And we know we haven't got two many bullets left. So, end the mission. Dan is victorious. It's still giving me the bonus for whatever we managed to do. But it's not giving us the breakdown of what we managed to bomb, including all those trucks that we managed to bomb. Ah, we now have the SPAD-7. Italy and Germany is now at war. SPAD-7 is now in the hangar. Let's get to SPAD. It's still flying French colours. Maybe we selected French at the beginning of the game instead of English. That definitely would make sense because you can choose which one you want to play. Or perhaps the English haven't developed the fighters. But I'm, I'm almost sure I selected the French to play as at the beginning of the game. And that's why it's coming up with all these. No idea, but we'll find out. And I'm coming now to the end of this review. We now have the Sopworth Pup, it says. Sopworth Pup. So that's even better. And so you can see the, well, miles per hour has gone up a little bit. Not as much as the Spad 7. And it's another photography mission. And we can decline things and move on. So I have good respect for this game I think it's a classic and people who've played this game like it to all the very best there are many World War One fighter pilot shooters out there even on the Amiga and definitely well I won't name many of them but definitely this one for me is the best 
and it's the one I've got the most respect for in the history. Look at that, downed by Dan. So we haven't downed any famous pilots yet, and we're still struggling to get up to 18 to match our heroes. So thank you for viewing this play guide and review, and we'll see you again in another one at some point sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you.